welcome everybody back to one of my Benton Valley Model Railway demonstrations. Today I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on uh, a motor turnout, a Pico PL11, which is one of these over here. Um, someone asked me about whether we could run the Arduinos um, through the servo code that we ha I have been doing um, to control one of these um, by the J JMRI and the CMRI communication and we can but we do need to change the Arduino code and it does work pretty well. Um, these are priced at about £10 each, they're a bit dearer than the servos but as you'll see in this demonstration they are a lot easier to set up so there is a, an advantage to having them um, so that's one good thing. Um, just a little note to say about these, these are um, only pulsed input voltages into these, you can't have a steady voltage on these because you burn them out, they're easy to burn out and so with the JMRI they do provide a system where we pulse the output um, so that it only pulse it for one second. Um, also these run on 16 volts AC according to the paperwork. I have run them on a little bit lower voltages and I'm going to be trying to run one a little bit lower than the voltage they're putting out because these still get quite warm even with the amount of pulsing that I do but then that's in this demonstration which I'll show you in a minute which is probably not um, the practical way because you wouldn't be turning your turnouts on your layout on and off as much as I'm going to be doing during this demonstration. So for the wiring and to say that as well that all the wiring, all the code and everything will be on my web blog which will be in the uh, description below so you can check out that for how I'm catching this up and also if you just want to copy and paste the code um, and then adapt it to make it work on your layout. Um, but for these, the wiring, we have three outputs on these. Some people probably have used these before. Um, the green cable is the common to your AC power supply, or one side of the AC power supply. Um, the red cable and the black cables pulse to the other side of the power supply, depending on what way you want your turnout to throw. So if I operate a pulse on the red wire here for one second, it will pull this turnout over to we and it flicks back a moment um, if I pulse it in the black it put it back to where it is now um, so that's how these work they rely on the turnouts friction to stay in position so for this demonstration although I'll be able to show it working it's not the ideal because it has got a slight tendency to want to spring back um, but that won't happen when it's connected up to the layer because these run on 16 volts AC um, we can't connect these directly to our Arduino um, number one, the Arduino doesn't give out that sort of voltage and if you did do it through your digital output pins to ground because these are, are just a coil of wire you might find that the amount of current that's being pulled out of your digital pin it might burn out your digital output pins on your Arduino or it might do some damage to your voltage regulator on your Arduino so I wouldn't advise connecting these directly to your Arduinos at all if you don't want to damage your Arduino so we use a, a relay bank now most people should know how relays work you, if you don't, you're better off looking it up. Um, but they have a output on this top side of the relay bank, um, which is electrically disconnected from the coil side, which is the Arduino is controlling. So that way we can control the 16 volts AC over here. But on the input side, I've only got the digital input from the Arduino, and my, my relays are five volts. I've only got a five volt power supply running the um, relays. Um, so I've got a common center to one of the power supplies on the 16 volts AC. And then I've got my red and my black wires connecting one to each relay. And then each relay in turn, when operated, will pulse either the red or the black wire, as I said earlier, to move the turnout one way or the other. So these are only pulsed on and off for one second and totally isolated. Now these relay balls, a little bit about these, these are the um, balls designated for sort of Arduino stuff. You can get them from different manufacturers, don't have to buy them directly from Arduino. Um, there's quite a few cheap ones coming in from China but you do need to get the ones like these with the optical isolators on them um, these electrically isolate because they work by light and um, they electrically isolate the digital outputs from your Arduino the electrical signal from your Arduino from powering the coil of the relay um, and it's important to have this um, to reduce the back EMF that could back, go back down into your Arduino and damage your Arduino or, or damage your, even your code on the chip um, you can use diodes I know some will say oh, just use your diodes and stuff like that to stop the back EMF but an optical isolate is the best and safest way of doing it and these boards are really not that expensive so you are better off getting one of these um, this board I'm using 
runs on 5 volts DC you can get 12 volt DC I'm not sure but I'll, if there's a 9 volt DC but there's different voltage runs out there but it's definitely a 5 and 12 um, and these are powered over here on these pins you probably can't see that so these are powered on these pins on this side and you see the black and the um, red wire here one red wire going to the VCC the black going to the GND um, these are being powered a 5 volt power supply from a bench power supply these are not being powered from my Arduino because if you're using multiple relays doing at the same time you're pulling too much current for your Arduino again so that, all the accessories like this try and power them from a separate power supply just to protect your Arduino really so this is a separate 5 volt power supply coming from a bench power supply but because it's separate and my Arduino is being powered by a computer I have connected the ground pin of the Arduino through this cable to my bench power supply so I've got a common ground between this power supply and this power supply that's coming from the computer and this stops any problems with your code if you don't have this connected I've had it where it just won't run so it's worth connecting that up and to operate the relays um, we have digital output pins which I've got over here pins uh, 11 and 12 I'm using um, connected to white and yellow cables here come out from Arduino and they go straight into the IM1, IM2 input pins here IM1 being this relay, IM2 being this relay and if I put a digital high or a digital low or 1 or 0 output they will turn the relays on and off um, to operate them so that's the basic setup here um, there's not much else to say really about it um, other than check it out on the website if you didn't understand it and you might understand it more from looking at the diagram than what I'm probably explaining it right so for the code we have a look at the Arduino code first I'm just going to move the cable I don't need the wheel oh, just knock the camera over try and make some space right for the code um, most of the top part is the same as all the other codes that everyone's seen it's got the CMRI H and the Auto 485H libraries in there to run this I'm leaving all the stuff set up for running this on the um, RS485 because that's what I'll be doing across my whole layout so most of this is the same as what I've had in all the other codes I'm still using address 1 which will be node 1 on your JMRI if you haven't seen these don't understand it you check out my other videos but I will just copy what I'm doing and so that's basically the top part set up um, you do need to get these libraries from the internet and put them into your Arduino library if you haven't done that go and check my other videos um, your program won't upload to the Arduino without having these um, in your library on your computer your Arduino library on your computer so for the basic code on this one, we're going to be sending from JMRI two bits. Um, so one bit from the JMRI and one address will close the turnout, and the other bit from JMRI will, which is another address, will throw the turnout. So we do need. That's why we have the two relays as well that I explained earlier. So because we've got two relays, and I said they're connected to pins 11 and 12, we need to set these pins up with a variable um, so we can use them within the code so I've given it T1C for turnout 1 closed and T1T for turnout 1 throw and both of these variables then are, connect, are being assigned pins 11 and the pins 12 and then like I said we've got two bits coming in so down here this will be say I'll just put it up here this will be for address 1001 and this one will be for address 1002 um, and they will be storing the bits that are coming in from CMRI or JMRI output um, so I've labelled these T1 bit close and T1 bit throw so it um, just stores the two bits um, this part down here is the same as what I've done on all the other code just copy and paste it in um, so they're for the setup so for the setup because we're using digital output pins not sure whether I did this on the servos but for these we definitely need to set up the pins to be outputs now remember on Arduino you have digital input pins and digital output pins they're the same pin so it's the pin 11 and 12 are either input or output depending on how you set them up in your code and so for this uh, um, demonstration they're going to be outputs so T1C and T1T are both going to be outputs as you can see where I put output in there you must set these pin modes up it won't work 
and it does these are capitals and they do go blue when you write it so look at the color coding on here if you're not writing this out by hand by following me make sure your colors are all the same if your colors are wrong somewhere you've written the code wrong um, so right because now we've got the outputs so because your relays when you switch your Arduino on we don't know what state the relays could be in. they could be turned on um, rather than off and if they're turned on permanently until our main loop starts up or you start up your panel pro you could end up burning out your PL11s without even realizing it so we need to make sure that in the setup that we turn our relays off so that's what this is doing here I'm doing a digital write T1C and T1T both relays and mine are going to be set to high which for me on these relay balls turn them off now just to explain that for the relay balls I've got a high output yeah is equal to the relay being off um, which is opposite to what people think I've got relay balls that are opposite logic which is bloody annoying and um, had some problems with these but um, there's different balls out there some relay balls are um, give a, a high output would turn the relays on and a low output would turn them off these relays that I've got a high is off and a low is on so it's reverse logic and you need to check this out uh, either look it up for your relays or the best thing to do is run this setup like this uh, comment this out make sure that your relays are off at a start up and if you've got them on at start up with this high ch change these to low rerun the program and see whether it's reverse logic and if you've got reverse logic to me you do need to change the reverse logic in down here that I'm going to be doing and showing you in a minute yeah so basically that's what that's, this is doing it's just making sure that the relays are switched off when we turn our Arduino's on um, the buzz begin is the same as what I've done before so I'm not going to go over that and the, in the loops in the loop system yeah so in in the void loop the first thing I'm doing is CMRI process st to start it and then the first thing we need to do is to read the bits that are coming in from JMRI um, and we read the two bits like this so both the bits are being stored into the variables that we set up up, up here above and we do the CMRI bit 0 which bit 0 will be 1001 and CMRI bit 1 which will be 1002 so there's our two bits coming in. Now the only thing I've got different here to my last servo code is this exclamation mark here. And if anyone doesn't know, exclamation marks within this code for Arduinos is a not logic. And I do this because like I said earlier about this logic being opposite, my reverse logic up here on these relay balls. With JMRI, the, um, I would say that the normal state or the off state, whatever you want to think of it, so normal state, yeah, coming in is always equal to equal to zero, yeah, and a pulse state, yeah, would always equal to one for one second. So if my input state is equal to zero all the time and my relays on a low, um, I would have the relays on all the time. So I put the not in there so that I reverse this logic. So normal state is equal to zero, but because I'm not, I'll be logging it as a one instead on the output. Yeah, And the reason for that is because I've got reverse logic relays. And so to back up a little bit more on the relays, what I'm going to be doing, um, a relay output, uh, dig digital right, high, obviously if my, my relays are turn them off, also the same as writing digital write 1 or digital write 0 0 could turn the relay off That's like my and because we can do that instead of writing the high or the low um, and just to back this up just I could have wrote in there 1 instead of um, write high or low and we know that in here we are storing a bit of 1 or 0 to verify all this we can just write this straight into the digital write so instead of writing this as digital write high and then digital write low and having if statements do that um, we can just put the and it will naturally then turn a zero coming into here 
but it's going to store zero into there, then it's going to make zero into there. And on or off, depending on what state your relay board is. Um, it's nice and easy code, really. I will, on my website, put the if statement code on there for people that don't like this and don't understand get their head around it um, and want to follow the if statement because they find that easier to read. I mean, the if statement works just as running that. Just that it's a bit longer writing code. Um, and I'll be putting this one up on my website as well. So it's up to you what you use. And if you wanted to add a second um, PL11, which I'll be doing a demonstration on it, um, all you need to do really is copy this, paste that in there, T T2 there, and um, that be a T2, and your pins will be the next pins on, so that'd be 9 um, and 10. Um, so that's to copy this and make the two different variables T1, T2, and T2. Um, add it on below here, which would then take up address 1003 and 1004. Your pin nodes, again, you copy that, paste it below, make your new T2, T2 um, flow outputs, and Again, copy this, paste it in. So you get the gist of it, hopefully. You make a, a duplication of all of this um, and then just make all the T1s to T2s. Um, and then that'll run it quite well. And the only thing you have to do is the bits will start with bit two and bit three. Um, so that'll add another one on. But I'll do a demonstration on that so you can see it following and, and getting bigger. And it, when you get up to, say, 10 or 15 turnouts, depending on how big your layout is, you can start doing things like for loops to reduce your code again but it's not necessary if you're don't, not into coding right so upload this to your um, Arduino I've already done that with mine if you haven't set this up before make a note of what COM port you're on I think pretty sure I'm on COM port 6 on this Arduino with mine um, so you need that for your JMRI so what we do is we start up now Panel Pro oh one last thing before we start Panel Pro I just mentioned I'm using pins over here. I'm using pins 12, uh, 11 and 12. You notice I'm not using pin 13. And you can keep an eye on this if you want when I turn on panel pro. I think it might flicker, but pin 13 is connected to the LED on the board as well. So it gives you an indication of what's happening. And when you turn on panel pro, or when you're programming the JMR, uh, the Arduinos, pin 13 quite often flashes on and off the LED. And so the output pulses on and off. And so if you connect that up to one of your relays and then power up your PL11 all nice and working and then you go and turn panel pro on, your output relay will chatter on pin 13 and your t this PL11 will chatter and it will chatter your turnout and it could damage it, it could burn these out so the best thing to do is to avoid pin 13. Um, but I'll turn this on and see if it just flashes, I'm not sure whether it, it flashes when I turn it on but I'm going to put panel pro on now. So you keep an eye on this area. There you go. See that little flicker? That is the transmission flickers. Um, but I have done it. It does chat the output every time it does that transmission communication. So pin 13, one to avoid really. Right, if you set this up for the first time and you don't follow the other ones, you'll probably get an error on your communication. Um, you can see mine's got all the communication nicely connected. So you need to go over to edit, go to preferences, um, Click on add to add a new connection. Click CMRI up here. Serial, because we're connecting by USB serial communication. Um, port, or port 6, as, as you can see, my, my, I don't know where mine's working right. But COM 6 was what my Arduino was on, on the Arduino program, so COM 6 is what you pick here. Don't change your prefix. Um, give it whatever name you like. I called mine the 485, but you can call it whatever you like. Um, and then click your save button. I'm not going to save mine because it's going to muck up the comms. So no. And then when you restart your panel pro, go into whatever you called it. This name, I mean, mine's called 485. This will be whatever you called your um, CMRI communication setup when you set it up earlier, probably. Um, so go into configure nodes. Oh, I haven't got a node set up, so it just shows you. I've lost my comms. Click add to add a new node. Remember, we'll be node one. And if anyone didn't know, that's because we've got address one here. If you've got a second Arduino connected up and you made that two, then obviously that'd be node two. So click node one, click add node, and then click done. It says to make sure you save it. I click done on that, and I'll go and save that. Go into my preferences. I'm going to click save. I'm not sure whether 
we'll find out in a minute. It's probably going to restart it. Yeah, it's restart. I must have lost the communication, so hopefully it works. So, I mean, on CMRI, see how it's changed the CMRI now, at number up here, I had 485, but I changed the um, name here to CMRI instead of 485, and it's changed it up here to CMRI. So like I say, whatever you call this, will change this tab, and we'll change this tab. So you need to know that, because you, if I, if you're ever looking for these menus, and thinking someone's saying, click on this CMRI, and they've named it different to you, that's why this changes depending on what you call it anyway going back to the what we're supposed to be doing so now this should be communicating all right so we click on tools click on tables and go for turnout and so now we're going to set up a turnout the same as what we did with the servo turnouts the only difference now is the as you'll see in a minute is the pulse outputs and the two-bit out, two output so click add give it an address 1001 which is the first address of our bit the second address 1002 will be assigned but we only have to give tell it the first address um, and jmr did the rest give it whatever name you like pl11 for this demonstration click on the create button instead of using one bit now like we did on the um, servos we're going to use two bits because we're using two addresses and we won't be using steady state because we can't steady state the output it'll burn out our system and um, we're going to pulse the output which will pulse the output for one second only and then go back to zero and there we have our PL11 setup. I'll just bring this over here and show you the relay board. For now, I've not plugged in my PL11. I'm just going to show you the relay board. And on the relay board, there's little LEDs uh, down the bottom here. And each, there's four LEDs here, four relays. So each LED corresponds to each relay. And the LED comes on to show that the relay's on and off, like it is now to show the relay's off. So I'll just do a demonstration of the LEDs first. And you hear the relays clicking. I'll hold it up as best I can. There you go. So that's the communication working quite well. So it works quite nicely. Not that much setting up on these. And now I'll just plug the AC power supply in for the. Can get it over here. a bit. So that's a 16 volt power supply I'm just plugging in so that I can demonstrate this. Now, like I said earlier, this is usually held in place by the friction of the turnout, so it might be a bit of a pain to show you this working, but we'll give it a go. You can see it's flicking back, that's a problem at the moment. If I tilt it a little bit straighter, there you go, it's staying there. That's a few clicks demonstrating this working. And like I said earlier about the voltage, this is 16 volts I'm putting through this. And these are, this is already getting warm just by operating it that many times. Um, so it would be nice to reduce the voltage on these um, to so save burning them out. Or if I can, or if anyone else knows, they can put it in the comments below. If there's a way of reducing the amount of time JMRI puts a pulse out, it's a one second pulse at the moment. It probably could do going down to 0.5 second. Um, so it'd be interesting to see whether that can be changed anywhere on the program. Just unplug the power supply on that. And that's most of this setup. I'll just try and connect it up to the turnout now and show it working. Um, if you're just going to add another one on here, just to make let you know that you would have to start because uh, 1003 because 1002 has already been used with this turnout. And because we're using two addresses for every turnout, if you're doing all sort of across all your Arduino uh, points, your 48 address outputs then you only reduce them down to 24 turnout per Arduino but realistically Arduinos are quite cheap and you can run quite a few Arduinos on this system with the RS485 um, and just to show you that setup if you come over here to your CMRI um, and then go down to your list of assignments you can see over here we're using address 1001 and 1002 for this one turnout um, and so if I did decide to set up another turnout on 1002 and try to create this it was saying here that bit 2 has already been assigned so it won't let me do it so you, you'd have to go to 3 and if I made this now 
use two again and a pulse output you see over here how we've now taken up two more addresses for another turn out on 1003 and 1004 and like I said earlier change out in the Arduino code so that's most of this what I do now is move all my camera and everything over to the other side of the room to demonstrate this now connected up to a real turn out right so the final bit for this video uh, I've just set up the PL11. I know it's not great in focus, but hopefully it's seeable for people that don't like things being perfect. Um, but it, I've set up the PL11 as a temporary, just cut the pins onto this turnout over here um, and crudely connected up all the electronics um, from my bench power supply and the 16 volts AC power supply for the relays, um, which is just laying across my layout. This is not a demonstration of it being done perfect. You know, just to show you it working on a turnout, but it's all connected up now across the other side of my room. And I've got the turnout table over here on my computer all set up. So if I operate this closed now, you can see over here it operated the turnout. And that buzz you can hear is where I'm saying that the voltage probably could be lowered because it is hitting it over hard and it's holding it on to it more than necessary. Um, JMOI gives out a one second pulse. That's something I'm not sure whether I can adjust on JMOI or whether it can be adjusted within the Arduino code to reduce that slightly which will save on wear and tear on the PL11s. And that's it. That's a few demonstrations of it working on the turnout. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. It's been helpful to anyone that's setting these up. I will try and do another video on a double one when I get one coming and maybe even do a double throw for two turnouts in one go and see how that goes. Um, but I will carry on building on these videos as best I can. And for me, these PL11s, they are more expensive than the turnouts, but they are much easier to set up. So I'm inclined to probably switch over to these because I'm saving a fortune on not having a DCC um, main controller, which is three or 400 pounds, and I haven't got any DCC, um, any DCC sort of accessories, decoders, and stuff like that, because it's all running on Arduinos. And Arduinos, for the nanos, you can pick up for about three pounds. So uh, I'm saving so much money that I will probably end up going over to the PL11s and see how they go, because they're easy to set up. But thanks for watching. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe because it helps my YouTube channel grow and it gives me an incentive more to make more of these videos. And if you, anyone needs any of the code or the wine diagrams or want to read how it's all built up rather than watching the videos, you can go over to my web blog which will be in the description below. I'll see you on my next um, adventure video.